All right, I wanted to go over setting up a PRS for a 578 because it's pretty confusing and there's about a thousand different ways to do it. So the first thing you're going to do is open up your uh, your program, your RDT program that has all your channels in it that you've already done. The first thing that's important, we're going to go up to Tools and then we're going to go to Options. Why this is a different function, who knows. Uh, we need to make sure GPS is enabled and APRS is enabled. APRS RX is only if you have the plus version or if you've taken out the module from the Pro like I have and installed a RX board. And what this lets you do is it receives APRS signals. Um, but we won't get into that there. So make sure these are set. Once you have those set up, you're going to go ahead and go over to APRS here on the side, and we're going to click that button. We'll kind of go through a little bit of these. Some of these are over my head, but they're what has, what worked. So the manual TX interval, if you click the button on your little, on your handheld, uh, you actually queue it up on the, on your APRS channel, it'll only send the APRS packet every 90 seconds. It'll let you do it. The other times it'll actually just like transmit your voice. So that's what this does. This is the automatic APRS TX. So every 345 seconds, like five minutes something, it will send an APRS packet out on whatever channel I'm on. I don't do roaming. Uh, fixed location beaking is only if you have like a home station and what this does is let you uh, uh, manually add in your latitude longitude. But since we're all using mobiles, so we're gonna keep this off. All right, so we're going to go down. This whole box over here is all digital. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, we're going to go here to treat transmission frequency one, and you're going to enter in 144.39, and just that's the only one you need. That's what's used in the entire United States. Uh, the new versions, which I'm on 1.15, you can add in multiple APRS frequencies. Uh, that's just not something we need to do, or that's in scope for this. So we're going to come down to the actual analog section. Uh, the APRX TX tone, uh, we're going to keep that off. You can send TX tones. Um, I forget exactly what the tone is, um, but this essentially lets you do something where um, it'll auditorily notify you on your radio if another APRX user is nearby. You can make contact quick and then uh, move to a subchannel. Um, so it's kind of just a way to like know if other users are nearby, but you don't want to hear that all the time, so we're going to turn that off. And then, so our two call is going to be APAT51, and this is actually required, and this denotes that you are a 578. Um, you can actually change it to whatever, actually good radios are hard-coded. Uh, this is not necessarily the case for some of these. So we can come over here. You could see APAT51 for our 578. Um, this is the big list they use at APRS.org. And then we can come over here to my Anytone uh, APRS station, and we could see that the device is uh, correct. We're going to come back. The two call SSID, we don't need to do that. Um, I don't know why you would, um, but we'll skip that. I don't even know. Uh, your call sign goes here self-explanatory, then your SSID. Um, so dash nine is for mobile, and you can look up your SSIDs. Um, here's just a quick page I found on it. So dash nine is for mobiles or trackers, dash five smartphone, um, something like APRS FI, um, so on and so forth. You can change that to whatever you want. And then APRS symbol table and APRS map icon. Um, I can show you this quick. So pretty much just Google this and you'll uh, and you'll get it. But um, so your first thing, so the first slash in my case is here, and then we go over to J and it's a little G. So row slash item J forward slash to be correct. So forward slash and then J is kind of cut off and that will be a little Jeep on the map, and then we can confirm that by looking right up here. And even says Jeep. 
Uh, all right, Digi Peter Path. This is a gigantic thing of confusion, especially for me. I don't quite fully understand it. Um, the one thing to note is it's standard across almost every other program to have a comma in between. That is not the case for any tone. There's no comma allowed. It won't transmit. So look this up on the APRS uh, documentation. But I went with wide 1-1 and wide 2-2. So I'll try to explain this a little bit. Wide 1-1 is supposed to be for rural locations without mountain top repeaters. So people that are at home that have a digipeater that can send to, and then only one hop, so it'll ingest it right away. Um, so I did that in case I was ever in a very rural spot without maybe any gigantic repeaters on a mountain ridge. Maybe some guy at home has one set up. So it'll try that, and if not, it hits wide 2-2, and this is for your mountain peak kind of repeaters. My understanding is it'll do two hops, which means it'll hit the first repeater, send out, hit the next repeater, and send out. Um, that way, anyone within those two repeater areas receive your APRS packet um, if that's something that they want. Totally could be wrong, but that's kind of what I understood in uh, that uh, there. This can be whatever you want it to be. I was just playing with this earlier. Um, this is uh, your sending text, so we can go over. And that's pretty much it right here. So that's where your sending text appears. Uh, you want your TX to be wide. Uh, and this is kind of going to get into the stuff I don't quite understand, but is required. Transmit delay is 600, uh, all this stuff here leaves, and then your pre-wave is also 600. Um, to my understanding, this means key, key the radio up for 600 milliseconds, send the packet, and then keep the, uh, the, the radio still transmitting for another 600 milliseconds after the packet is sent. I think this is so it ensures the packet's sent and it's not closed before the entirety of the packet is received by the DigiPeter. Um, that could also be wrong, but that's my attempt at understanding. And then over here on the right side are, I believe, objects that you can receive, and it'll tell you down here um, kind of what they are. I just enabled the ones that kind of made sense, but the biggest one you want to do is make sure you have position enabled. Uh, and I believe also uh, message is good in case someone sends you a message. Um, this is only if you have the RX board, though. All right, so that's all we need to do there. And now we're going to go into our optional settings. And we're going to go to the GPS ranging tab. We're going to ensure GPS is on and GPS positioning is on. Uh, I don't know why there's two different tabs, but there are. Set your time zone. Uh, this 60 seconds here is every 60 seconds it'll pull for a new coordinate. Now you can change that to whatever. I use the inch system because I'm American. Um, uh, template, you can include text in for GPS transmission. I don't know why or how that works, so don't don't question, don't ask me. <laughs> GPS mode, I just have GPS. BDS, I guess, is a separate satellite system in China, like Baidu or something. Um, that's not going to work here. And then GPS roving, I have off. I believe this is in case for like moving around repeaters, it'll use your GPS location to change repeaters. Um, that's my understanding of that. Okay, cool. So that's done. So the next thing you need to do is set up an APRS channel. So you can see I have them here. So my APRS is 175. So we're going to scroll way down. I have a whole lot of channels. So here's my APRS transmission channel. And what this does is it lets you um, send a APRS packet as soon as you queue it up. Um, so say you don't want to wait the whole five minutes that you set, you can change to this channel, queue it up, send your packet. Um, and this is the exact same receive. Transmit is 14439. Um, and you can, of course, you want to make sure this is wide. And you can copy all of this here. So this reports uh, APRS and analog. We don't do digital over RM Ham, Rocky Mountain Ham. I guess they just don't allow it for some reason. 
And then this says, as soon as I queue up, send the packet, uh, start a transmission. And that is it for that. Oh, one more thing. The report frequency, you want one. Remember that huge box of all those frequencies we could have entered in? And we just had box one entered. This is where you ensure that uh, you select number one because that ties into the, the frequency there. All right, so that's sent. Um, if you do an RX one, it's almost identical. You just check the RX box. Now for one very fun thing I discovered at the very end. We're going to come in here, and you see this report type is analog. Um, so this was not the case for any of my channels. And this is extremely dumb on Anytone's part. But what this means is, if this is off, which is the case for all of your channels, I guarantee it, if you don't have APRS set up yet, is that when tuned to that channel, it will not send an APRS packet if you're tuned to that channel in the background. So APRS, we expect that when we have channel A and B loaded, still in the background, it'll send a packet, like every 60 seconds or whatever you have it set to. If you don't have this set to analog, it won't do that. So your automatic APRS TX will not work. So you have to set analog in our in our case on every single channel or else APRS will not work in the background and to do that open up Excel there's a field here called APRS report type and what you're going to want to do is change all of them to analog um, you're going to export your channels and then change these analog and import them back in and then that'll fix it for you after that you can wait a specific, specific amount of time, make sure it shows up on the APRS FI website, and then you should be good to go. Um, well, that is pretty much it for setting up APRS on the 578. Uh, if you have any questions, you can shoot me a message. Um, it's definitely not easy, and this doesn't encompass digital uh, APRS if we do not support.